Hello, dear friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we see a Spanish shipwreck from the 1600s in Imperial Valley. You know, that got me really thinking of, again, you know, all those legends of an inland sea. Now we see the Salton Sea. This is where they say the shipwreck perhaps is, and there's actually petroglyphs there. So it gets me thinking uh, about many things, you know, mud flood and as well as, you know, big earth changes. Was this once all opened up? Could you have gone from perhaps the, you know, Gulf of California here all the way up to the Salton Sea, perhaps even farther up into uh, California as when we saw the conquistadors came here they said things were very very different than what they are now how fast can things really change well i think they can change a lot faster than they tell us and as i look at that it's just curious there's a shipwreck there and it's it's so desert like it is a desert you know but you see where it is here's a el centro over here and you see the shipwreck location pinto canyon where there's petroglyphs as well very, very curious, you know, telling this sta- this the uh, story of their perhaps shipwreck and what happened to them. I think things are able to change much faster than we realize. Probably on a dime. And over here we see extreme weather events that hit Bristol. This is over in the UK 400 years ago. It revealed a newly transcribed chronicle, and this is 1607. So, you know, it's getting me to wonder because they're saying, well, this must have been something localized. But then when we look at the Spanish ship thing, you know, it's in the general time frame again. So was there a huge mud flood in somewhere around these times or just before these times that created very, very different conditions? Well, I definitely believe there was mud floods and on timelines that they're not telling us about because they need to keep certain things secret in order to keep us under control. 1607, a true report of certain wonderful overflowings of water. I guess they're using wonderful in a different way there. Uh, Bountiful, for sure. (laughs) Now, lately in Summerfet Thyre, I guess that's how you would say in Old English, Norfolk and other places of England, destroying many thousands of men, women, children, overflowing, bearing down whole towns and villages, drowning infinite numbers of sheep and other cattle as we see the depictions of the people and so this is the great flood of the bristol channel but what what really caused it was it you know something that we're seeing uh, similar circumstances now or is is it going to be even more intense now or maybe less intense now well look at lately these headlines where they say places have gotten six months worth of rain in like six hours Exactly, exactly. And and I think there is a very concerted effort to downplay a lot of this and to make things uh, seem like, well, they didn't know what they were talking about. This is not related to that. And it wasn't that bad. This was just local and et cetera, et cetera. So you see historians from the University of Bristol have discovered contemporary accounts of numerous weird weather events that happened in the Bristol area around the turn of the 17th century including devastating floods, massive snowfalls, and frosts that saw rivers frozen for months. Details come from a chronicle that was acquired by the Bristol Archives in 1932, but then declared as unfit for production due to extremely fragile nature. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Access to the manuscript was very limited, making it difficult to investigate its contents. Using digital photography, a team led by Dr. Evan Jones from the University of Bristol's Department of History has now painstakingly transcribed the document. So, you know, this talks about these weather-related events, extreme, that occurred from the 1560s to the 1620s, uh, which coincidentally, again, would would occur with a lot of the Native American legends of an inland uh, sea over in California, you know, thousands and thousands of miles away. It sure would if we had access to enough stuff. I bet you we could put that together. I think um, I think things are constantly gobbled up, hidden away, or destroyed. Absolutely, yep. Abs- you know that that's that's part of this bigger plan. So, Western Australia lashed by once in ten years flooding, roads, highways destroyed here, and and again we <coughs> we're seeing this everywhere 
all the time, every day, all the time. Uh, yeah, look at that. That's pretty sad and horrible. Farmers, truckies, travelers remain cut off from the rest of the state. Huh. You know, it's it's. I don't think it would take anywhere near as long as most people think for all traces of civilization to be wiped out in major catastrophic events. I mean, look at these roads. They're, you know, gone in a blink of an eye. Can you imagine if something was occurring where people were not constantly rebuilding them as they are able? Yeah, that's right. Looky there. That's horrible. Flash flood claims 24 lives and illegal underground oh. factory in Morocco. And again, this is a desert area, but everything is going to be changing, as uh, you know. Our friend David Debine has said, you know, Northern Africa back during the Roman Empire times was more of a breadbasket than it is now, and so we're seeing flooding of the desert really at an unprecedented rate in many locations. And I feel like we probably would be seeing it in the American West and Southwest too, if it wasn't for certain things that you know make these funny-looking clouds up in the sky. And devastating floods leave eight dead, five missing, and this is in South Africa. And and look at what water did to this road or uh, bridge. It's gone, just totally gone. This is what we're seeing. Things could be wiped away in a heartbeat. Wiped away very, very fast. Our mother can take care of it super fast. Yes, that reminds me of Tool. Mom's going to wash it all away. Oh, yeah. Yes, she is. Flash floods leave at least four fatalities in Jordan and Saudi Arabia as well. As you see, the <laughs> that pickup looks like it's stuck in, uh, well, uh, now it's a mud bog or sand bog, maybe kind of quicksand dish. And that gets me thinking of the great quake down in Charleston in the 1880s because everything is just sand over there. And that's another um, spot that probably I feel like it'll go concurrent or right after the New Madrid um, and it can reduce to 7.0. And the thing is, with the land being nothing but sand down there, it's like quicksand when it's happening. Well, that's the thing with deserts. these They just get flash floods, and the ground is not made to absorb the water. So it's so devastating. As we see helicopter rescues going on there as well. Heavy rains and flooding, and this is in Brazil. So again, it's it's all over the globe. It's on all the different continents that we're seeing these massive floods. So my question to you guys is, 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 is another event underway right now that's very, very similar to what perhaps they saw back then, just 400 years ago? I don't know. It could be. And then we have the Arctic has descended, snowstorms and ice bringing much of Europe to a standstill. As we see uh, the watchers, widespread Arctic air mass, frigid temperatures, brutal wind chills affecting the U.S. and also Europe, as we were saying, uh, you know, lake effect snows. And again, you know, when you get these record snows and then you have record flooding in the spring that follows washing things away. I mean, a couple of years ago, I think it was two years ago, we saw such flooding up in Wisconsin and Michigan. Again, entire roads just gone, bridges gone. And of course, we don't forget the flooding that we saw in uh, Nebraska and Iowa as well. And again, all that is also adding to the what's going to be the food shortages to come. You know, right now, um, you know, there's still food in the grocery stores. Of course, you know, it's one person in, one person out in so many areas. And, uh, you know, there is the line of thinking that we're going to see a lot of things start to be limited, you know, one per customer two per customer i know that's just it's just it's on its way there's no denying it major snowstorm hits the netherlands germany and the uk and so dutch authorities declared a rare code red emergency for the entire country on sunday as a severe snowstorm named darcy by the meteorologist hit parts of western europe first major snowstorm to hit the netherlands since january 2010 and it also affected parts of germany as well as the UK. Dozens of people injured, and, you know, obviously it's dangerous conditions. Fun for the kids. They get to do some, you know, sledding and skiing and all the like. Got to find that silver lining. Yes, you do. You do. And here we see up in Himachal Pradesh, heaviest snow in 30 years, whiteout conditions in India. And, of course, we send our prayers to everybody affected by the breaking of the dam because of the glacier. That was really sad. Yeah, very, very sad. So records falling all around the globe. It just seems like everything is getting more and more intense. 
And, you know, as we see here, uh, this is how the strange sounds. And they're just positing the question. Well, uh, it's, maybe it's not really a question. It's just a statement. The collapse is near. Do you feel it coming? How many people feel it coming? As, you know, there's video here of an avalanche that took four over in Utah. And, of course, we had over, tw well, we had 22 disaster events, weather-related Losses exceeding a billion last year. What will this year bring us? So you look at just all those hurricane impacts and all the tornadoes, all of the flooding, and of course the fires in the West. And you know, look at some of those temps. And again, this is the uh, an effect of the weakening magnetosphere. And when will the New Madrid go? That's that's an interesting thing because, you know, the composition of the ground is so different in that area that it will be felt over a much larger area than, say, when the San Andreas or Cascadia goes. And the sign of the snowy owl is a portent of the ice age that is now upon us. And isn't he beautiful, though? Wow. He is. That's, that's a beautiful bird. So, guys, thanks for being part of the family. Make sure you are subscribed. Thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon because we couldn't do it without you guys in these days for sure. And also, anybody that needs to reach us, it's E-E-A-R-T-S at ProtonMail.com, EvolutionaryEnergyArts at Gmail.com for any energy work. Vedic charts, which thank you for your patience with those. Cindy's working her, her little fingers to the bone getting those done. I am. Thank you so much for your patience. As always, guys, have a plan out there. Stay safe and keep sending your prayers out there. God bless and namaste. Namaste.